Hi everyone and happy Wednesday. Today I'm going to be working on a fun, whimsical, beginner-friendly, mountainous landscape. <laughs> I'm going to work on breaking this process down as much as possible because I want I really want to make this easy for you and I would really love for you to join me in painting. Now, I generally do not work very much in that way, in that broken down step-by-step -step kind of way because I'm an intuitive painter and that means I kind of let my intuition guide all of my creative decisions. So I'm going to do the very best I can to break it down as much as possible for you. And I think it's going to work out really well. Um, we're only going to be working with two colors and different values of those colors. And I'll explain what that is as we go along. And then towards the end, we'll add some pen work and a little bit of um, shimmery paint. For me, that's going to be gold because I love gold and the gold I want to paint with goes really well with the colors I've chosen for the painting. So I'm excited about that. And I'm excited about the fact of creating something uber simple because when it's simple, it tends to also be very relaxing and fun. So <laughs> I hope that's going to be the case for you. I'm pretty sure that's going to be the case for me. And I hope we can have some fun together. If you don't feel like painting today and you just feel like relaxing, hey, you know what? I'm all for that too. So let's get going. So first things first, I'm going to create a background for my painting and for this, because I'm creating a landscape, I'm, use, I'm using a little bit of blue with a lot of water and I'm basically covering the whole entire sheet of paper, which I have cut, if I'm not mistaken, to six by eight and I've taped it down to a piece of plexiglass, something solid, just to make sure the paper doesn't buckle. Once I'm done adding my light wash of paint, I pull out my table salt, regular old table salt that we use for cooking, and I'm sprinkling it all over the paper. And then it's time to let all of this dry. Once my background is completely dry, I will remove the salt using a plastic card and then I'll move on to the next step, which for me is adding a circle to the top of my painting. And I'm using a compass to do this. A circle guide is also something that can be very useful for this. Or if you are really good at drawing circles freehand or love the look of organic circles, then you can just also just draw it without any guides or tools. To start adding my mountains, I first start with a clean damp brush and I come and add a little bit of water to my paper where I want to start dropping in some color. The first set of mountains are going to be the ones that are furthest away in the landscape and I want them to be lighter in color. So I'm going to be working with some pigment and mostly lots of water and that's going to keep the colors very light. I'm going to be adding some salt to every set of mountains that I create in my painting. And while those 
uh, little crystals of salt are drying with the paint, I'll work on the upper portion of the painting on adding color to my sun. First things first, I come in with some water. There's a little bit of pigment on my brush, but I'm not overly concerned about it. And I'm not just adding water to where the circle is, but I also want to add a little bit of color to the outside of the circle because when I add the color, it's going to spread and that's going to help to create the uh, appearance or the um, resemblance of maybe some uh, faint clouds in the sky. And I love that. Working wet on wet, which is what we're doing here, uh, where you're adding some color into water that's already on the paper. It helps to really um, spread that color into other areas of the painting and I find that it creates a really whimsical and lovely effect. After letting everything dry and removing the salt that was on the paper, I'm now coming in and I'm going to add another little chain of mountains and this time they're going to be slightly darker than the mountains I created up top. So to do this, I am working with more pigment and a little bit less water. I don't want it to be the darkest um, area of mountains in my paintings but I do want to make sure that it is darker than what's already on the paper. So I'll add a little bit more pigment and then once that's done I'll also add some more salt and then let that dry as well. To darken your blues, you can either work with one color and simply add less water and just more pigment to your water. And generally speaking, you should have a darker value of color. Or you can work with a more intensely pigmented color of blue and add that to your mix as well. So I'm always working with blues, either blues that, have, that are lightly pigmented or I'm working with the same blue and I'm adding more water um, for the lighter values and adding less water for the darker values. Salt is usually what I add to an area when I want to let that area dry and I want to create some uh, little marks in the paint. And usually that means I'm not going to add any more pigment to that area. I'm going to let it completely dry and then I move on to working somewhere else. If I were to add any pigment next to the area where that's already wet and has salt in it, it would start to dissolve the salt a little bit more than I actually want it to. And so it's easier for me to work in another area. And that's why right now I'm working on my circle. I want to intensify those colors by adding more pigment to my circle and I will also work on adding some more salt to this area as well.
probably the hardest thing about this painting is having enough patience to let each layer dry in between. <laughs> um, it takes a little bit more time and especially in the summer when it's humid it can take even more time so it's good to just kind of walk away and go work on something else. I love to have other little paintings on the go when I'm uh, building layers like this and then I don't feel so exasperated when it takes a while for things to dry. I could use a heating tool like a drying tool like a hair dryer in order to try and speed things along but I do find that when I use those um, the dryers it seems to not have as much of an effect with the salt um, for whatever reason the salt doesn't seem to react the same way either because it's it's just not getting enough time to do what it um, wants to do and so I think it's usually better for me in my experience and it could be different for you um, I tend to find that it's better to let the layers dry naturally in this final layer of mountains I'm really going with my darkest value of blue and I'm going with a lot of pigment and much less water because I want these mountains that are closer to be darker um, and that gives the painting a little bit of perspective and I think it makes it more interesting. Here I've pulled out some coarser grain sea salt and I'm adding it to my circle where I've just added some more paint and I'm going to drop on each of these little granules of salt I'm going to drop some more pigment and that's going to leave some interesting and different marks from the other salt as well. I'm feeling at this point as though my mountains need to be a little bit more divided and uh, defined and so I'm coming in with some light pigment. Um, I, you could start off by just adding a little bit of water and dropping some pigment into the line that you draw but I'm just working sort of the same way I worked when I first added my layers of um, mountain ranges. I'm adding some light value of color and then I'm spreading it down into the bottom of the paint of the uh, mountain using a little bit of water. I don't want to completely cover that area with more pigment. I just want to draw a slight definition between the two mountains that are in the very background. And then as I go along, I'm going to work on creating the same thing with the other mountains and I'm going to go a little bit darker with every layer I go down. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. When I'm working on uh, spreading the pigment I just added 
down the um, shape of the mountain. I'm really working with just water on the bottom and I'm gently rubbing my brush on the paper so as to move the pigment down a little bit. I'm not trying to scrub the paper because I don't want to remove the marks that were left by the salt and so I'm just gently adding some water and that's going to help to spread the paint down the mountain. I'm starting to feel really happy with how the definition of the individual mountains is coming along. And so I'm at the point where once I'm done adding just this little bit more color to this one mountain, I am going to let everything dry and I'm going to let it dry completely. And once that's done, then I'll start working with adding a little bit of pen work. First things first, I'm going to define my mountains even more by adding some stippling. And for me, because I'm having some issues with my right arm at the moment, I love to work with my dotting pen. Dotting is, or stippling, is something that you can do easily with a regular pen. Um, I've got many paintings that I've done using just a regular fountain, fountain pen to do my stippling. But it does take a little bit more time and it is a little bit more strenuous on my arm and so I prefer to work with a dotting pen. I'm feeling as though my sun is very plain at this point, so I'm going to use my compass to add a couple more circles around the sun 
And then I'm going to use my ruler to create um, a bit of a sunburst around it. I think it'll make it much more interesting. But by using the ruler and the compass, the process will still be very simple. Precision is not usually the way I function. I like to keep things way more simple. So to create my sunburst, I'm just approximating where the center of each arc is in my circle and I'm adding my lines and even if it's not exact I know it's still gonna look really good. For some reason when it comes to working with gold I always forget to turn on my camera. <laughs> well I shouldn't say always sometimes I remember but I don't know if it's the excitement or what it is but it's seems to be the case that I often forget to start my camera. It is so much fun to work with gold. I love how it shimmers on the paper and this gold in particular called classical gold looks so nice against these colors that I was really excited to start working with it. Because I've created these lines using my pencil it's a lot more easy to work with my fine liner brush to just trace the paint over the areas where I've added pencil. And because this gold is relatively opaque, the lines that are underneath are not going to show um, underneath the paint, so it's going to be, it's still going to be fine. Um, when I'm working on creating lines like this, I am really making an effort to only brush the very tip of my brush on the paper and I try my very best not to apply too much pressure on the bristles so that they don't fan out and create a much bigger line than I would like to create. And usually if I work in creating small little lines that I kind of add together, it's easier for me to create a relatively straight line or to trace a relatively straight line. That's the best tip I can offer for that. If if I were to try and paint the line all in one shot, because my arms and my hands are not nearly as steady as they used to be, it probably wouldn't work out so well. So I like to break it up a little bit. The gold looks really lovely around my sun and because I want to create a very cohesive composition, it's important for me to not just leave it at the top of my painting, but to also spread a little bit of that gold into the bottom part of the painting as well. That will help bring everything together. And I try to keep it a little bit lighter because of course, the sun is shining on the mountains. The, the mountains are not the sun itself. And so I want the sun to stand out a little bit more, but I do want to add a little bit of that shimmery gold to the rest of the painting. I've mentioned in a number of my videos that I love to keep my process as simple as possible. And so I often work with stippling and vertical lines. Um, I like to keep the details very simple. When I use a ruler to initially mark out the areas where I'd like to work in some vertical lines, it helps me to have a guide that I can follow so that my lines remain relatively vertical. I'm not going for uber straight lines. If I were, then I would just simply use my ruler, but I do prefer the look of organic lines. And so I create that first guideline using my ruler and then I move on to just working with my pen. And I try to move relatively fast up and down the area where I want to add the vertical lines. And generally this works out pretty well for me. But sometimes I'll create a little line like I just did right there that looks a little bit more wonky than the other lines. And I'm completely fine with that because I find that it adds a little bit more whimsy to the painting. It helps to keep the painting interesting. 
Well, at least that's how I look at it. <laughs> With all of these little details added, I can feel that I am starting to get close to the end of my painting process. And then at the same time, when I'm looking at the top portion of my painting, I feel as though it needs a little bit more value contrast. And so I've decided to add some stippling around my sun just to darken things up a little bit and to make that area of the painting pop some more. Just as I was ready to pull the tape off, intuition stepped in and I decided to add another little gold circle inside my sun. And then I felt like, yep, it was done. So I'm removing the tape and I'll move you in closer for a look at the details in this painting. Isn't it fun how much this gold shines in the light? Oh my goodness, I love it so much. And it's so beautiful against that blue, and it's also beautiful against the orange as well. I think it's just the perfect gold to complement the whole painting. So that's it, my friends. Is this something you can see yourself creating? Are you feeling inspired to pick up your paint supplies? I sure hope so. I had a ton of fun creating this painting and I'm so happy you were here to join me. 
Thank you for being here with me, and I hope you have the most wonderful week. Happy creating, my friends!